Let's start this uh, meeting. Uh, let me first of all welcome all my colleagues and partners to this event. This is not uh, a public one. It is somehow a webinar by invitation, like a pilot one. And our plan it is, if needed, we'll repeat it uh, in the future. Uh, second observation, as Shailish already mentioned it, uh, all what we will present today will be shared with all the participation 24 hours after the end of this event. And third, just to, to let you know that uh, whatever we will be sharing and saying within this event will be recorded and the recording of this presentation will be uh, available for each one. Okay. As an introduction, and uh, we'll have an extremely brief one, the most important element of this presentation, it is to hear from my partner, from DP Ward. As you know, uh, one of the most important uh, consequence of this pandemic situation is the speeding of the digitalization. So I'm sure that each one of us and all of one has started a digitalization process of our day-to-day -day work uh, since even before this pandemic, but today this pandemic is pushing us to speeding this digitalization process. This is the third observation. The last one, it is since 2018, our organization started the collaboration with uh, uh, DPO. DPO since 2018, more or less was a port manager. And today, more than a port manager, it is a logistic, a cargo and zones manager. And we started this collaboration in 2018 and 19 on our annual event in 2018 and 2019. And today I'm happy to start this new step of collaboration with DPWOD, which is developing some concrete action to, together. We have plenty of other actions and project in the pipeline with DP World. And the first one, which I'm proud to share today, it is an online management of the zones. I will be joined by my colleague, Simon. Simon will present the general somehow thoughts and idea behind this project. I will have after his colleague sharing with us some videos and some somehow demonstration of the project. Immediately, without no more uh, delay, I share, uh, I leave the floor to Simon. You are asked on any time to share with us your questions, your concerns. We will do our best at the end of the session to give the floor for some question. What is clear within 24 hours, you will receive all the presentation and document we will share with you, and none of your questions will be left without answer after this. Simon, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. You are time. kindly asked each one of you to switch your off your micro in order to uh, have a better reception of Simon's words. Simon, you can go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Samir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for taking the time to organize this webinar uh, for the presentation of the cargo zone management system. Uh, participants, good afternoon to you. And again, thank you for taking the time to be with us this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are. Uh, as Dr. Samir mentioned, uh, the objective of this webinar or this meeting is to present to you the cargo zone management system, which is a product which has been developed by DP World and and uh, where we are using uh, Dr. Samir and his team to promote and share this product with the World Free Zone organization community. Uh, Khalid, can you, can you share the presentation, please? Okay, Khalid. Sure, Simon. Yes, please. Yeah, next page, please. So before I jump into the actual presentation of the zone management system, next slide, please, Khalid. Before I jump into the presentation of the zone management system, I just wanted to share a couple of slides with you just to give an overview of DP World and to put into perspective this collaboration that we have with the World Prison Organization 
with a view to share and promote the Colgoza management system. As you all know, historically, uh, Deepwell has been a port operator. However, in the last couple of years, we have been very busy working in repositioning ourselves with a new vision, which is that of being a global trade enabler. What does that mean in practice? That means that we still maintain our ports and terminals business, our core business. And then at the end of the day, try progressively to move and to take a more active role in the supply chain by number one, developing a global network of economic zones. And then also at the end of the day, trying to invest and get more involved in the logistics services side of things. So as you, as you can see on this, on this diagram, uh, we have a ports and terminals um, pillar, if you want. And then as we move to the right hand side, we'll invest in economic zones and then in logistics services. So this is where we are going. We will, can you hear me? Because I have a message saying that the connection is not stable. Yeah, we can hear you, Simon. Okay. Yeah. So we that's, that's the objective of DP World. Thank you. That's the vision of DP World to move from its traditional and core business of being a port operator to be a global trade enabler. And as I said, we are going to do that by investing in more progressively in this global network of economic zones that we are developing and thereafter going closer and closer to the customer, getting closer and closer to the market by investing more and more in logistic services. And while we develop all this um, portfolio and network of physical infrastructure in terms of logistics infrastructure, log uh, industrial infrastructure, ports and terminals infrastructure, what we are also doing is to develop a suite, a complete range of technology-led solutions as well that we share with you in the next slide. Thank you, Khaled. Khaled, the next slide, please. Yeah, so as I said, so as we move uh, along this, uh, this road to become this global trade enabler, the development of our global network of economic zones become more and more important. Just a very quick snapshot. Today, we have seven economic zones projects which are operational. We have three in Dubai, and then we have four more in different parts of the world, Kosido, London Gateway, Kigali, and Djibouti. And then interestingly, uh, we have another 12 economic zones projects which are in the pipeline in Latin America, a lot of projects in Middle East and Africa, in the subcon, in Far East, et cetera. So as you can see, a very, very ambitious uh, program of economic zone development that we have in the pipeline over the next couple of years. So by 2022, 2023, we will have a total of 19 economic zones in our portfolio. And by 2025, our goal is to have 38 zones. While this might look very, very aggressive and ambitious, this can be done because at the end of the day, the approach that we are taking, as far as Deep World is concerned, is that we have seen the success of combining a port and a zone together in Jebel Ali. We have seen it in different places where we are also operating in Cosido in London Gateway. And now our approach is that of a one port, one zone, which is basically and very simply wherever we have a port, our objective and ambition and desire is to also develop an economic zone next to this port. Thank you, Hannah. As I said, in addition to developing this physical infrastructure of ports, economic zones, and logistics infrastructure, we are also developing and investing in a suite of digital solutions. This is where our cargo zone management system fits in. So a number of these products are being developed under the brand of cargo. So you have cargo zone management system, cargo finance, which is a trade finance platform, cargo customs, as the name implies, is a customs uh, system. We have cargo data chain, which is a blockchain platform, Cargo's Runner, which is an ERP for freight forwarding, Cargo's Flow, which is a cargo tracking system, Cargo Rates, which is a booking system for cargo. And then we are also developing uh, a number of B2B e-commerce platforms. Uh, Dubai.com is one of them. So I hope this couple of slides puts more in perspective how come today DeepWell is presenting and promoting a zone management system to this audience of our free zone operators and managers. Thank you, Khaled. Yeah. So what are the objectives of the what are the objectives of the zone management system? As I've just shown you, we already have seven economic zones in operations. We have another 12 economic zones in the 
pipeline, which means that we have been over the last couple of years very busy developing a zone management system that we feel can help us manage our zones successfully and efficiently. And by doing so, we have tried to identify what are the critical functions, what are the critical, critical activities that this zone management system should uh, include. And we have come up with eight of them. Number one is the sales function. Number two is the commercial services. Number three, the admin services. Number four, the compliance. Number five, aftercare. Number six, asset management. Number seven, facilities management. And number eight, operations. In a nutshell, what we have tried to do is to meet three specific objectives through this zone management system. Number one is to manage very efficiently everything to do with a sales function, ensuring that we get the right customers on board, ensuring that we have the right customers into our zone. The second part is basically in terms of operations. Yeah, operations in terms of movement of goods in and out of the zone, operations in terms of our asset management, in terms of our facilities, facilities management. And then number three, which is also important, especially when it comes to, 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 to the authority, the administrative functions of zone, is to ensure that we have a good compliance function in place as well. So the zone management system that we have enables you to manage your sales function, enables you to manage your operations, and also manages you to have extremely efficient compliance within the zones that you're operating. Yes, Ali? One thing that is important is that while the core of a zone management system consists of these eight uh, modules that I have mentioned to you from sales to operations, it is also a system that can integrate very, very easily with other applications that any zone can have already uh, in, in operation. For example, the finance uh, application. Of course, what we are trying to do is that every zone in the world today will have basically a finance application. So uh, our objective is to develop a system that allows our zone management system to integrate efficiently with the finance function. Similarly, for operations, of course, when we talk about operations in the zone, we talk about the movement of goods in and out of the zone, what we call the gate operations. And then you can also have warehousing operations in the warehouse, you can have transport management, you can have yard management. So objective here is to develop a system, the core system consisting of these eight modules, but again, which can be integrated into any operational or systems for operations that the zone have in place, warehouse management system, transport management system, or a yard management system. So all this to say that we have developed a system which has got a number of core functions and core modules, but which can be very, very easily integrated into existing applications that a free zone could potentially have in terms of finance or further uh, operations modules. Thank you, Kali. What are the key attributes of the, of the zone management system? Number one is that it is very rich in terms of functionality. We have developed something, as you will see, which can serve both zone managers and administrators. What I mean by administrators is the authority that you would find in most countries which have got the responsibility to administer the zone. So they're the ones who will give the license to the, to the operators, they're the ones who will give a license to potential developers as well. It is very modular in nature. As I uh, mentioned, we have, we have come up with eight uh, very distinctive, very specific modules. So if we are deploying the system in one of our zones, or if there is an external party that comes to us, we can either implement the full eight modules or subject to the choice of a customer or the free zone, we can also uh, deploy uh, each of the system in, in, in specific modules are requested by the customer. Number three, it is an in-house development that we have done, which means that it leverages on all the experience that the team that we have in DP World has in terms of developing our economic zones, whether it is in Dubai or elsewhere. So the thing is that it's not something academic, it's something that we are presenting, which is very functional, very practical in nature, based on our operations of these several zones uh, all over the world. Quick rollout, it has been developed in a way which allows easy customization and which can be implemented very easily in entities. We know fairly well that not two zones are similar. Each zone is, has its own specificities, which means that a zone which is logistics in nature will have different requirements which, for, for, compared to a zone that where it is 
mostly geared towards industrial activities. So all this can be taken into consideration when we are uh, developing and deploying the system in a specific location. Communication records, the fact that the system is connectivity to Outlook 365 means that it allows us very, very, very easily to communicate with the customers, whether it is in terms of distribution of circulars, whether it is in terms of uh, sending an appointment to visit and inspect their, their, their facilities, or whether we need to send a communication to a client in the zone concerning their renewal of their leases. The system also allows you to have a number of dashboards, which allows you obviously to, to monitor and manage your sales process, your aftercare and your compliance. As I said, these are the three main things, sales, aftercare, compliance. It's not, it's one thing having a very, very efficient zone in terms of your sales, but then what is also important from a compliance perspective to ensure that all your customers are indeed operating their facility uh, based on the regulations that have been put in place. Finally, it is a cloud-based solutions, which means that it doesn't require any infrastructure, which means eventually that there is a reduction in the operational cost for the deployment of the system. It is designed based on a single instance of proof, which means that all your database is centrally located. For example, you will have a master of all your facilities, of all your pricing, which means that it is a system that is foolproof, which uh, the users cannot decide one day or the other to change the price, change the facility. All of it is centrally, uh, all the information and database is, is central in, in, in the system. Finally, it is developed using out-of-box and rapid application, which means that you have a reduction in the maintenance effort and cost in deploying and maintaining the system. Thank you, Khaled. What do we have next, Simon? I will just finish the presentation very okay. quickly. I will just go over the different modules. Okay, go ahead, please. So the first okay. modules that we have I participate is the sales modules. And the objective of these sales modules is to, is to accompany, is to show the journey, the customer journey from the minute you have an inquiry from a customer to the minute the customer at the end of the day has a reservation and a booking for a specific facility in your zone. So that's the, 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 what the sales module encompasses. Next. So once uh, we have, uh, the, the customer has gone through the process of the, the, the sales process of inquiry, of booking, of reservation, et cetera, when the customer signs a lease agreement, then this is captured in the second module, which is the commercial services module. And the objective of the commercial services module is to capture all the revenue generating services that is offered in the zone, ranging obviously from lease agreements to different services that we can offer in the warehouse, whether it is pure warehousing services or value added services, whether it is uh, uh, services that you offer in the container yard or uh, more real estate uh, services such as utilities services. So here again, as an example, when in, in the system, when it comes to utility services, as I've said before, it's a very, very flexible system, which will allow you, for example, to invoice your, your customer as per consumption, kilowatt hour, or you can allow you to, to, to invoice your customer on a meter square basis or at a fixed fee. So this is just one example to show you that the system is very, very flexible. Uh, the, the, in, uh, under commercial services, the system also allows you to, to offer a number of what we call investment and trade facilitation services. For example, you will still have a one-stop shop in a particular country which registers the company, which issues building permits, which issues EHS permits. However, if in your zone, you are actually offer, offering these services to the customer, to facilitate as a facilitator, this also you can, you can offer this in the, the commercial services module. And of course, uh, it's very flexible, very expandable. This module then also offers you the possibility to, 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 to issue, offer, and invoice a whole series of other services like transport, labor, waste management, access cards, etc. Thank you, Pamela.
admin services. This is a, this is a module that we have developed specifically for administrators, i.e. Uh, the, the free zone authority or the special economic zone authority in a particular country whose objective and whose mandate and powers and responsibility pertain to continue registration, licensing, issuing of construction, building permits, EHS permits, work permits, etc., etc. So this function basically allows you to set up and operate a typical one-stop shop offering these services that I've just mentioned, company registration, licensing, and all the other permits that a one-stop shop could potentially offer. And then we know that the administrator or the authority in a particular country has other functions as well and has other responsibilities. They are uh, supposed to monitor the certain economic indicators in terms of the creation of employment, in terms of investment that has been made in the zones in the country. This system also allows you to capture this information and then from a dashboard perspective, uh, uh, issue reports which show uh, the amount of employment, the amount of investment that has been done in the different zones over a specific period of time. And then, of course, as an administrator, very often the responsibility to ensure that there is compliance. And as we have seen before, this, 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 uh, this system also allows you to monitor the level of compliance that is happening in, in the respective zones. Thank you, Khaled. Here we go, we come to compliance. So compliance, again, we have divided our compliance module into two very specific functions. On the left-hand side, you have what we call the operational compliance. And then on the right-hand side, we have what you call the regulatory compliance. When we're talking about operational compliance, it's to ensure that all the operators in your zones are operating and undertaking the activities um, based on best practices, whether it is in terms of EHS, in terms of the buildings in terms of operational guidelines. The system also allows us, as you will see in the demonstration, to actually carry out inspections. So I, I mentioned before about the connectivity with uh, Outlook 365. So we can, from the system, send a request to a customer in our zone for a meeting for an inspection. So this module allows you to plan the inspection and also once the inspection is, is done, to actually do the reporting. and. In case in the reporting that you do at the end of the inspection, there are some violations, the system also allows you to issue penalties, fines, and even if required, hopefully not, to suspend customers who have been the serial defaulters in the zone. So that's on the left-hand side, the operational compliance that we try to ensure. On the right-hand side, there is everything to do with the administrative or regulatory compliance, so which means that you can, and the system allows you and will prompt you, in fact, to ensure that you have regular inspection from an administrative perspective to ensure that the company's license is in due form, that the license of the company is, in, is, is valid, to ensure that every, every, um, um, every employee in the zone has got the right uh, permit to, to, obviously, if we are talking about foreign employment, that they have a right work permit and residence permit to operate in the zone, and then also like 4.8, sometimes there are some zones which have got a limit, just as an example on the sales that you can do the local market. So this system will also allow you to plug in, for example, customer X is allowed to sell 20% of the local market. The system will detect through the different uh, trade and operation that the customer has done, how much we have been exporting, how much we have been selling the local market, and then it will, at the end of the day, uh, indicate whether the customer is in compliance with the regulatory uh, environment in which it is operating. Thank you, Carlo. Simon, you are left with five minutes, please. Very good, very good, thank you. I'll, I, I should be able to finish, not a problem, thank you. The next one is aftercare. This is what I consider as one of the most important uh, function and module that we have in this, in this system. Very often we have customers who are sitting in our zone and we talk very, very rarely to them. This module allows you to have a very efficient, what I call customer relationship management. Number one, uh, 5.1, you have a customer dashboard. Very often when we go and see a customer, they will always tell you that, you know, this has happened last month and this has happened last week. I haven't been able to do 
is a is in practice an A4 paper. Each time you go and meet a customer, that will tell you exactly who is this customer, how long they have been in their zone, what operations they have done, what opportunity they had, what difficulty they had. So, which means that whenever one of your sales team or aftercare team is meeting a customer, they will have in their hands an A4 paper, which tells them everything they need to know about the customer and its last operations. It also allows you to, to set up meetings with the different customers, again, based on the and the connectivity that we have with, with Outlook 365, it allows you from the system to directly book your customers for meetings. Feedback and complaints, again, very important in the sense that you know, uh, any complaint that is made by the customer is logged in. It's, it's logged in by category. Are they complaining about the, the port operations? Are they complaining about customs? Are they complaining about facilities management? So which allows you at the end of the day to have a very good overview of the type of things that people are talking about and they want to improve. And then you can put this in your planning to, to remedy these issues that customers are complaining about. Go to the next one, Khaled. Asset management, very quickly, uh, my, my colleague will show you the demonstration uh, afterwards, so asset register, it allows you to have on the system all the assets, whether it is facilities or equipment that you have in the zone. It allows you with respect to the different uh, warehouses, different land plots that you have. You can have it on your system through a geocoding system. They will allow you through Google Maps to identify the location of the different uh, assets that you have. Asset allocation, each time, again, all your assets, whether it is an office space, whether it is a warehouse, a showroom, a land plot, will go into this master database of assets that you have. And then each time an asset is allocated, this will tell you which asset has been allocated to what customer and for how long. Asset status, it will tell you whether a warehouse has been leased, is booked, is reserved, and the maintenance or leased. Asset utilization reporting, this is important as well. At the end of the day, at the end of the year, what it will tell you, which, which assets, which type of assets have had the highest level of occupancy so you can have an idea which assets are performing well and which assets are performing less well, and then obviously take corrective actions. Thank you. Facilities management. So this uh, this module in the system allows you to do your planning with respect to the to the to the maintenance of the different assets that you have. It can be in the form of schedule maintenance, which means that you have a maintenance plan in place or reactive maintenance, whereby uh, let's say somebody has made a complaint or has raised an issue as per the, 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 inspect, the, so the aftercare module that we just saw, then a prompt will come, but this customer has made a complaint or has raised this issue about warehouse number one, then this again comes into your maintenance plan and prompts somebody to go and have a look and repair the issue that the, or remedy the issue that the, that the customer has complained about. And the system also allows you to, to, to manage all the contracts that you're having with external contractors to work in the zone. And also if external labor is being used for the labor management, how many labors are being used for each, for each type of repair in each facility. Thank you. Thank you, Khaled. Last but not least, I mentioned the zone operations before. So the core module in the zone management system uh, pertains purely to gate operations in and out movement of goods. But then, as I mentioned earlier, we have this design, the system in such a way that it can very, very easily integrate with other uh, applications which are used in different zones for operations, whether it is transport management, whether it is warehousing management system, or container yard operations. I think that was my overview, Dr. Samir, on the different modules and functions that we have in the zone management system. And I think the next slide will be by my colleague, Mohamed Abzar, or Sai. Yeah. Please. Thank you, Simon. Thank you all. Yeah. Quick. Go ahead. You have five minutes, please. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. And uh, as you covered all the modules, basically, that we have a solution that covers end to end needs of any uh, zone management uh, areas. And thank you for giving elaborate uh, module-wise description. Here I will be talking about uh, the technology in which it is built on. And we used Microsoft Dynamics 365 to build these products. 
these products comes with the inbuilt active directory so it is single sign on with the people it becomes easy for the people to use the system because when we deploy the system this will be integrated with your active directory so you get a seamless uh, integration and all the facilities required for sales pipeline customer service all the modules are built in and enable uh, seamless integration with your outlook and it is also comes with the mobile devices where you can deploy this solution for ios as well as android mobile phones so basically it provides the unified platform for your infrastructure like simon mentioned it has all the modules required for performing your operations from end to end perspective this slide highlights to you the end to end perspective from the technology side how it is easy to integrate with your current ecosystem because everyone uses office 365 basically they use outlook and they have active directories so this will get integrated very easily on top of that we have also have inbuilt dashboards that will be used for your decision making so it is end to end tool both in terms of the infrastructure easy to integrate and as well as easy to provide services to your business community so this is uh, in nutshell the advantages of developing the solution in microsoft dynamics it is a low code development any changes whatever request you have that can be quickly incorporated to fit your organizational requirements it doesn't take the long development cycle because it works on the rapid application development mode yeah we can go to the video khalid as the dynamics of global trade go through a paradigm shift it is essential that businesses step up to make strides in the new global trade economy free zones could be part of the answer They can help companies unlock new ways of getting closer to their customers, optimizing their trade flows, attracting inward investments, and diversifying into new trade markets. At DP World, our strategic location and state-of-the-art technology gives us a unique understanding of the functionalities of a free zone. Our years of rich experience helped us develop an ingenious custom software that provides tailor-made packages and smart solutions for the seamless operation of free zone functions. Introducing Cargo Zone Management System, Cargo's ZMS, a cloud-based solution which provides zone administrators, developers, and operators a unique integrated system. covering all critical operating functions of free zones and special economic zones. Generic products available in the market fall short of managing specific end-to-end -end requirements of a free zone. These products target individual functions rather than providing an integrated bespoke solution. What's more, these products are not scalable to handle the requirements of a large free zone. Say hello to Cargo's Zone Management System (ZMS). It is a single integrated solution that brings together all critical functions needed to manage a free zone or special economic zone. The cutting-edge solution eases a variety of zone-related activities. Cargo's Zone Management System offers enhanced interaction between zone operators and their customers. This highly scalable solution enables free zones enlarge their customer base, and its loosely coupled architecture allows quick rollout to free zones across the globe. The user-friendly screens enabled for desktop and mobile devices ensure anytime, anywhere access of Cargo's ZMS. Adopt DP World's innovative Cargo's Zone Management System. Future-proof your growth. Request a demo to know more about Cargo's ZMS by visiting our website at www.cargos.com/zone-management-system. You can also email us at support.in@dpworld.com. Thank you, Khalid. 
and uh, thank you Khaled. Yes. thank you Mohammed. Uh, what is next Mohammed and Simon do we have uh, a demonstration now yes uh, Dr Samir we have a demo of the solution and so uh, we'll who will run it yeah. please sign Arinder. yes sir yes sir I'm here I sign I'm so sorry to give you bad news you have just 15 minutes yeah sure sure uh, we will start it now yeah, sure. Let us welcome Lydia from Uruguay. Just join it us. Well, hi. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yes. Hi. Can you share your screen, please? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. All right. Yeah. Let me share my screen. So this is a cloud system, cloud application. So we don't have to do any installation or any other extra steps. Directly, we can give the logins to the customers and the end users. So they can log in and then they can start using it from day one. We can't see the screen yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Ravan? Yes. Can so one minute. One minute. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying it. Yeah. Can you see it now? Yes. Now, yes. Now, yes. Okay. Yes. So oh, this is a print screen. Mm -hmm. So this is a front screen where we can see all the applications which uh, Simon and uh, Mohammed Absar has mentioned. So we started with uh, sales module to have a flow of uh, the customer lifecycle. Can you go to sales application? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, these are all the eight uh, uh, apps which uh, Simon briefly spoke about, uh, starting with sales, uh, and then we have commercial, uh, admin, uh, and then compliance, uh, and then asset management, aftercare, facility management. So let me go to the sales application. So uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is what uh, uh, the sales application looks like. So we have different requests under the sales application. So to keep it simple, let me start with the application screen. So this is how uh, the customer application screen looks like, where we are capturing the type of the application um, and then the customer and a few other details, uh, uh, the contact details, and then the shareholder information we are capturing. Uh, the list of shareholders, we can have multiple shareholders uh, on this screen. And then we're also capturing board of directors. And then also we are capturing the facilities required uh, for the applications. I mean, what facility the customer would be interested in and the total investment that it entails. So uh, to give just a brief uh, 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 screen of the facility application. So this is how a facility application looks like. We have multiple facility types and we are capturing a few basic information like the estimated investment and the project construction start date, operation start date, workforce, and other few basic related, uh, related details like the type of materials and the plot size and things like that. Now, at the application level, uh, we have two different stages. One is submission of the details and then uh, know your customer check, KYC check. So once the KYC check is completed, that's when we say that the customer uh, uh, information is verified and is now uh, ready for uh, conducting the different transactions in the zone management system. So this is briefly uh, on the sales uh, application. So let me switch to quickly uh, to the commercial services. So initially we spoke about all the different eight applications. So now we are moving from sales to the commercial services. So under commercial services, uh, just to keep it, uh, uh, we are. Uh, this is the screen of the lease agreement, uh, so or the lease request. So where we are capturing the customer name and the start date, what is the lease type, and the booking details of the property which the customer is interested in, and the amount, uh, uh, the lease amount, and as well as the uh, tax. Uh, uh, all these fee, all these uh, details related to the tax and the lease amount. These are pretty much configurable, as Absar and uh, Simon said. Uh, and then we are working on, um, uh, as, uh, as uh, Simon iterated, is a rapid application development tool. Even the business processes, we develop it on Power Automate and, uh, and as well as uh, inbuilt workflows. So we could create uh, some quick uh, workflows like automating the payment schedules. Uh, so this is the payment schedule screen where based on the invoice frequency that is inputted and the lease amount, uh, we do have multiple payment detail records that get automatically created once the lease is active. Yeah, so this is on the commercial services where all the leasing solutions and any other uh, request to the customer is having will come to commercial services. Then we move on to administrative services that some of the authority functions which the pre-zones might have. 
can you go to admin and applications where we can see for admin services the company registration the actual registration of the company maybe it's a service provider it will have uh, the local uh, law of the land the economic development board in that specific country will assign a license and a registration for the customer those things can be handled here uh, can you go to commercial services no sorry admin services please Yes. Uh, so before I move on to the next app, which is the admin services, this is a, a high level view of an inbuilt lease dashboard. Uh, this is very quick dashboard. We can put multiple tiles in it as per the need. Currently, we are showing the, all the active lease agreements and the lease agreements which are going to get expired uh, in the next few months. So we can have multiple such dashboards. Uh, as you see, there are multiple dashboards and we can have uh, based on the need, the business. Now, as Sai said, uh, let me move on to the admin uh, application so within the admin application we have multiple requests uh, so for the sake of the scope of the demo we are opening a license request screen so this is how a license request looks like and uh, uh, you have uh, different requests which are grouped under different service requests which are grouped under the admin so currently we are showing the license request screen so let me minimize the navigation we are capturing the customer information the lease and the property as well uh, and we are making sure that the license that the customer is applying uh, uh, is some uh, is related is associated to the property that uh, they are they've leased and then uh, uh, and then we are also taking the expiration request and uh, the derived license expiry date so as i iterated earlier uh, uh, we do have a very configura uh, configurable customization in that sense that when we roll out uh, the payment uh, related to a particular request or beat uh, some essential documents that the customer is supposed to submit all these are very much uh, uh, configurable. So all the customizations that we see here uh, uh, can be configured. So that is the way we created it. So this is the license screen. And once we uh, uh, once the license request gets uh, approved, then uh, we generate a license uh, form and then we can give it. So we do uh, have uh, inbuilt document generation capability where we configure the document templates and then we can even uh, export the uh, uh, in PDF format and send it to the customer. This is on the license request. We, uh, and then this is a, uh, this is another example of a license dashboard, uh, simple license dashboard. Yes, no much visuals, but yeah, uh, we can have multiple uh, dashboards like this, where we are showing all the active licenses and the license which are expiring in the next two months. Then uh, to move on to the next application is the ZMS compliance of the eight different applications that we spoke about. I mean, we discussed, uh, we have uh, seen briefly a screen in sales and then commercial services and then admin. And now we move on to the compliance. Uh, so under compliance, again, uh, we do uh, have inspection requests and then violations uh, majorly around these things. So this is how an inspection request screen looks like where we are uh, 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 capturing the key information like uh, the account and the license agreement, the lease agreement, and the facility for which the inspection is being conducted. And then there is a scheduled date and the actual date, because the actual date could differ from the scheduled date. And then the different inspection types that we are saying, it could be an EHS or a building or a general type of inspection. And then we also have uh, certain settings whether we want to have a follow-up inspection to the existing inspection. So those kind of details as well uh, are being captured here. And these are the different inspector details that are available in the zone uh, in which this inspection request is created. So we do have configuration as well for uh, uh, automatically scheduling uh, repeated, I mean, frequent inspection requests, uh, even those things are there. And then uh, once this inspector gets assigned on the day of inspection, uh, uh, so the inspector can access the screen from mobile and uh, they can, uh, given these uh, observations, any violations found during inspections can be raised here. So that's what this screen is. Okay. This is the screen. Uh, this is the violation. Uh, this is how it looks like. So whatever the violation that we're talking about, uh, it can be raised against an inspection request. So this is a violation. So uh, once a violation is raised, uh, based on the violation type, we uh, populate an action, uh, whether it is a remedial action or as a penalty fee involved. 
and then uh, uh, there could be several other actions. All these actions can be configured. Uh, so this is how a violation looks like. Violation screen looks like. And once the customer makes a payment for the uh, violation, we close the inspection request saying that the violation is addressed. That will be the end of inspection request. And so to give a small example of our dashboard in the conference, so this is how we created a Power BI dashboard. Um, this uh, dashboard can be very much plugged into the system, but uh, this is a very quick uh, dashboard that we created. Uh, and then uh, the violations, and then we can even have more visuals and more other informations and then filters as well. So this uh, uh, briefly shows us all the different type of violations based on the violation type. And similarly, we can also see different inspection types based on category. Yeah, the slicer is not the right one to show the different inspection requests. But yes, to give you a quick feel of uh, the different dashboards that we can create, this is the capability of it. Now quickly moving to the next screen, that is the uh, uh, aftercare. Uh, so we moved on from sales to commercial and then uh, to uh, admin and then uh, to compliance and then now we are aftercare. So aftercare revolves around mostly the incident management kind of a capability where uh, this is the screen where we are capturing what is the different, uh, what is the uh, type of, the, what is the title of the case or the incident? And then we are capturing the severity and then certain case category and uh, uh, whether it is a commercial or is it something related to admin services. And then we do have the capability to convert both an uh, email, uh, uh, an email to a case or an incident. And then uh, we could, we have various channels to capture this information and then the customer details. And then we also capturing some additional details uh, such as target date uh, and then actual resolution date, these things. And then we do have separate statuses on uh, who it gets assigned. And once the needed resolution is provide, provided, we resolve the case and that's the end of the story on the incident. And at the end, yes, there is an email that gets shot to both uh, to the owner of the case and as well as to the customer. Now, quickly moving on to cases dashboard. So this is a small uh, a dashboard uh, of an example of cases uh, uh, or the incident. So case by status, and then we have case by priority and case by agent. So this is the aftercare. And then we quickly move on to the asset management. So asset management, uh, majorly, uh, this is what we refer uh, all the facilities. Uh, so uh, we, that could be multiple facilities. Uh, so this is one facility screen where we are showing all the facility code and the property unit number description and what is the facility type. It could be a warehouse or it could be a serviceable land plot. And what is the total area? And uh, we are also capturing the invoice frequency in case if there is a lease that is made, uh, a default value that gets uh, populated directly from the facility level. Those are the key informations that we are capturing here. And then we do have the facility location. Uh, this is the geocoding map, which, uh, um, uh, which Simon was talking about. So this is a, a, a small Power BI embedded map that uh, shows the brief location. And we can also uh, uh, you know, plug in the most uh, more advanced maps like Argus maps and Arc GIS maps, uh, just that it would entail a little additional license. But yes, uh, that capability is very much there uh, um, on, at the dynamics level. So this is the uh, facility listing. And then quickly it's moving sorry, on. Sorry, you have uh, just five minutes, please. Yes, yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the facility listing uh, and the geocoding map, which uh, Simon told. Now, to move on to maintenance request uh, or the facility management, uh, this is how it would look like. Um, this is the screen where we are uh, showing uh, a typical maintenance request where we are capturing uh, what this maintenance request is all about. So, we have different types of a maintenance request uh, related to the asset. Uh, it could be CM external. What do we mean by CM external or CM internal is the corrective maintenance and preventive maintenance, uh, broadly two different things. And then external internal, whether uh, we are uh, uh, procuring the resources uh, from outside the zone or is it from inside the zone? That is what we refer by external internal. But yeah, at a high level, we are capturing these details and it goes through a certain life cycle, whether it is new, in progress and finished or rejected. 
and then uh, at the asset level we also capture the asset details at the maintenance request level and once uh, uh, all these details are captured it goes through a certain cycle of work order uh, work order gets created uh, behind the scenes on which uh, all the tracking related to um, you know the resources uh, it could be uh, um, the assets or uh, it could be uh, the item uh, items that uh, are being con uh, the resources that are being consumed all we track it at the work order level so once that is uh, once this is done i mean once the work order gets completed the status uh, or the life cycle status of the maintenance request as well gets updated to finish and then uh, we have uh, the maintenance request management a very high level dashboard uh, that shows all the different maintenance requests uh, that get created uh, uh, what are the active maintenance requests and what have been created in the past uh, few days uh, and whenever the request status gets changed we do uh, uh, then there's an automatic and uh, i mean auto, auto email that gets a shot to both to the owner and as well as to the customer and in case if there is a vendor involved as i said uh, depending on the type of the request uh, whether it is external or internal we uh, uh, it gets shot to even the vendors involved and then i quickly move on to the other module which is the operations so this is the screen uh, of gate operation screen where a typical gate in and gate out uh, uh, at the zone uh, uh, we are capturing certain information like what is the delivery invoice number, date of entry, date of exit, and uh, 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 if it in case of a gate out, and then the driver name and few other details like whether the entry is loaded, uh, truck plate number, driver license number, and then the container details as well. We are capturing uh, what are the different container details. So since there can be multiple containers involved, uh, we we show we are showing it in the form of a subgrid or a grid. Um, yeah. That at a very high level is uh, is the gate operation. So, gentlemen, I want to ask you. Sorry, I'm just interfering with you. Who will just capture one, the one question? Please. One one moment, please. Let's our colleague uh, uh, finalize his presentation, and we have already one hand raised it. And I will after give you the floor. Please, uh, sir, can you finalize? Finish. Yes. Your Yes, yes. Uh, I think I'm done. Uh, uh, I'm done with all the, uh, the screens which I wanted to show. Yeah, we're done. Oh, you are done. So can you uh, get out of the screen, please? And uh, I have, uh, we are left with few minutes. So we have the floor uh, for, uh, I see one hand raise it. Uh, and after I will give the floor to our colleague, who just intervened. Lydia, if the floor is yours, please. Hello, good morning. Um, hello to everyone. Uh, I have just, uh, thank you very much, Samir. Nice to be with you here and with the rest of the participants. Um, I just wanted to know um, in terms, sorry to be so direct, but um, I work board of directors. So of course they will ask me um, in terms of, of the budget or, or in terms of money, I would like to have a clearer picture and um, to be so more concise uh, and to know more about that, please. Okay. If I can answer, uh, Dr. Samir. Yo, go ahead, Simon. Yes. Lydia, thank you very much for attending the webinar. Thank you very much for, for participating. And yes, I, I can understand if you're a member of the board of director, this is one of the main questions about what will come. However, as you have seen the, uh, you have seen the presentation, we have about eight modules, and in each module, we have an average six to seven or eight uh, different functions, which means that we're looking at a, over 64 different individual functions in, in each other uh, module. So for example, if you take, the, if you take uh, the commercial services one, you start with a lease agreement, then you have a utilities, then you have access card. And as I said before, not two zones are the same. They are very different in nature, very different in the commercial services. So I think for us, it's a matter of, we will never say this is an off-the-shelf project, Lydia, off-the-shelf product, go and use it. No, there's a due diligence that the DPO team will do with every zone, understand what is your mandate, understand whether uh, you, you operate the zone as an administrator, as an operator, as and how many customers do you have, what are your gate operations like, whether it is industrial, as I said, compliance will be different from industrial, logistics zone. So I think we are not in a position to put the price on the system. What we are ready to do is to talk 
with the Kesamir and the community of the World Prison Organization, and Destiny Reformer, do the diligence, and then come with solution, any, any, any commercial proposition to you. That's what I I hope I answered your question, Lydia. Yeah. Thank you very much, Simon. So we are almost out of time, but I think Silesh, Shailesh has a question. Okay, gentlemen, I just want to, thanks for your, uh, sorry, uh, thanks for your time. I just want to know the gate in and out of special economic zone, who will do the entry? It is an automatic system or this is a manual system like, you know, some gentleman is sitting there and he will punch the data. You want to take that side? You understand my question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Simon. So for uh, gate operations, uh, as of now, uh, Silish, we have uh, designed it as a manual input because uh, the tracks will be coming from uh, uh, multiple places and we don't have a gate appointment system still in place. So we have made this as uh, a, on that event, on that particular spot, uh, whichever a track is coming in and going out, we will capture minimum information of those details so that we will have a record on the gate side. What is the trade volume going in and going out? So now currently it's so it's a manual, manual entry. entry. Sorry, manual entry. If I can sorry, if I can compliment that Dr. Samra as well, Salish, as, as we showed in the in the in the presentation. So this gate operations is the core of the zone management system, but then it can be integrated to your uh, transport management system, to your warehousing management system, and also to your customs system in, in the country. So if there are certain information which have already been, been kind of been introduced or input into your custom system, which can be integrated and imported into the gate uh, operation system, then obviously the amount of data that you have to manually input will reduce drastically. So it depends country by country. Some countries, the customs people do not want to share the information with anybody. In some countries, they actually want the zone manager to take over the customs process. So it depends from location to location to what extent our gate operation system can be integrated into the custom system of a country. Okay. Thank you. This Thank is you why the due diligence that I spoke about is critical in what we are doing yeah. and what we offer you in a very efficient Thank way. you, Shailish. Thank you, Simon. This was even just uh, my personal question. You know, uh, Simon, one of the objective of this organization is to integrate free zones within their ecosystems and you uh, partially answered my question when it comes to the relationship with the, the customs authority. So um, thank you so much, Simon Khaled, uh, Mohammed and the team uh, for this uh, presentation. We reached the end of this first presentation of our Deep World World Fusion Organization collaboration. As I said, our commitment with the participant, it is to share with them whatever we have presented today, and they will be individually approached for the next steps. I don't know, if Simon, if you would like to add something else. No, thank you very much. I think, uh, thank you, Dr. Samir, for having given us the opportunity to present uh, the zone management system. And I think that the message to, to the team and the participants is that, um, I hope I don't, you know, my missing, but we are not a consultant. Deep World has got many, many years of experience in developing and operating uh, economic zones globally. So the system that we have presented to you is based on this experience that we have had in terms of the operation of the zones. And that's why Lydia, again, I will say that we can't put a price on a system because the process that we follow is not a top-down, but more of a bottom-up approach. We start at the grassroots level, we understand the zone, what is the mandate of the zone, what are the objectives, and then work up and provide you a solution that fit your uh, needs uh, to operate the zones more efficiently. Thank you everybody for your time. I committed with Thank all you. of you that it will be a one hour event and it is just now one hour. We started uh, five minutes late. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Simon and team for the sharing the information and we will be in touch with you within 24 hours. Thank you. Happy, happy to have any inquiry, Dr. Samir, from all the participants. Further thank inquiries. you. Sir. Happy to answer all the questions and inquiries. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Lydia. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Pots. Thank, thank you, Dipuati. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.
Take care, Sami. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much.